I wanted to have a quick look at Cineworld. I posted this company uh, last time I did anything on this company. It was on the 30th of June uh, last year and it was 58 pence at the time. And currently it sits at 63p and it's not really moved um, much on like 5% in almost 13 months and yet it's it's moved obviously since that so at one point yeah it went up a little bit um but you know it went up to sort of that one one pound 25 so from this it has doubled but then it's come back down again which is is making me query where this can go and the most recent half year results have also shown some pretty bad numbers and um, given its price it's very unstable and I wanted to have a look at Cineworld as opposed to AMC, Disney and Netflix and just quickly look at all those four, work out sort of which one would be better and then just sort of give the outlook primarily for Cineworld since it's a UK based company and where it could possibly be going. Uh, my name's Tyrone, it's the 23rd of August and you're watching Mini Pip. Jumping straight into the video, I wanted to look at the numbers first produced in the first half of the year. Uh, if we look at them, we had a revenue of around $292 million with a loss before tax of 576, but the loss for the period was 515 because they got a tax credit of 61 Point two million. So they took a loss essentially of 515 million, which is twice or, or there or thereabouts, nearly twice the revenue, which is a problem. But it gets a little bit more concerning when we look at the balance sheet for Cineworld. And this is where I think that it could actually not be recoverable for them. Uh, or, it's, or potentially they're going to stay where they are maybe for a very, very long time. Um, if we look at the balance sheet, they have. 436 million cash and cash equivalents essentially and then they've got 60 million restricted cash and cash equivalents essentially this is the money that is in the bank uh, or anything in here is essentially what they can um, trade for money there and then after shall we say and these long-term things generally speaking you don't really want to touch because they matter to the long-term prospectus of the company so when you see goodwill at 4.8 billion, that's not necessarily something you can change. Property and plant and equipment, if you start to reduce property, plant and equipment, essentially that's them selling the cinemas. And if they sell the cinemas, then they can't keep up the revenue. That's the problem with non-current assets. They're long-term things to look at. Looking at the debts as well, they've not really got any better. They've got worse. Um, so we've got... Uh, uh, loans and borrowings at 4.8 billion dollars that's up another 200 million from the previous half uh, lease liabilities are up ever so slightly so everything is pretty much up in terms of their borrowings and their debt looking at total liabilities around 10.6 billion dollars giving them net negative 276 million provided that they've lost 515 million dollars this year they only have 400 million in the bank and they have negative assets None of that at all is good. It is really, really bad to see, um, unfortunately. And I did see on the more user-friendly um, sheet that they was, they're was burning around $45 million a month. Uh, and again, that only equates to 10, 10 months of cash and cash equivalents or holdings before that's all gone. And they have to raise money by either doing a, a, a buyback, a sell, equity raise and whatever and that just makes things worse it, you know it's, it's a it's a downward spiral um so they've got to be very careful where they are at the moment if we go over to the chart again looking on the daily time frame nothing has gone on so i posted like i said i posted this june 30th 2020 57p i wasn't really um you know i said mixed signals as such i, I you know there was a potential that we could continue to rise and we did actually from here we did actually rise almost 100% so when this was posted uh, when was this uh, July so it was posted somewhere in the region of around here we did at some point end up at 121 but at one point you would have ended up down a lot you know 70 80% before we went back up 100% from where you originally bought in at that 57k so it is a seriously you know it's, it's a seriously swings around a lot this year and um, looking at its current price at 63p I 
I just don't see a move higher. And I think that the, the ceiling in this sort of share is that it's this 120 level that we saw in March of this year. And the problem is, as we return back to a normality, Walt Disney, or Disney, should we say, has been able to increase on their um, Disney Plus subscriptions. And Disney would like to, it would be preferable for them to cut out Cineworld because if Cineworld's making a billion pounds a year or a billion dollars a year pre-2000 or pre-pandemic, that is essentially money out of Disney's pocket. If they can have the streaming platform to just do that themselves, which I've seen recently, then they're going to do that because they're going to make more money. And in return, that is going to knock companies such as Cineworld out of the uh, out of the industry. And and I think that with the change and the way things are going these days, I do think that the cinema is 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 struggling. Uh, places like AMC, they do have cinemas as well, but they also have their own shows, uh, The Walking Dead and stuff like that. So as a result, you know, you've got this little bit of livelihood in AMC. Um, you've also got the Wall Street Bet stuff going on here. So there's a potential, you know, with AMC to see up to this 60, 70 level if we get a short squeeze. And even in the long term, there's nothing wrong to say that this share has got stability. I believe I posted about this a couple of weeks ago, about a week, a week or two ago. So $30 is, is the floor here. Um, you know, break below there, we could potentially see it go towards fifteen dollars. But I, I provided that this holds, definitely could see this continue higher. That would make sense, and that would be good as well. Um, looking at Disney quickly, again, Disney's just looking really good. We're just having this couple of weeks of consolidation in August where we get that quiet volume, and then we probably will continue higher. There is no reason to do that as the parks are opening as we turn back to normal. We've got Disney Plus now added on to the revenue stream and the park revenue, which will start to, or has shown already to start turning profit. Netflix, again, is the same situation. They are monopoly and they will continue to probably be a monopoly for a long time. So I would be heading towards 600 to $700 at some point in the next 12 to 24 months. But Cineworld, looking at it, it's just not, really that good and there's a very good possibility that if they don't see any improvements in the next half that they could continue towards this sort of 15 pence level this lows here and there is even a very good possibility they could go bust they have competition from Odeon they have competition from View and some other small cinema chains so realistically as much as there is a market here I think that this market is getting smaller you know I look at cinema personally I've, I went to cinema to watch A Quiet Place it was all right but it, you know i'd rather sit at home now on the couch and watch a film uh, from home i just i just would and i think that that is going to be potentially be a lot of um a lot of people's way of, of looking about it because the cinema is expensive as well um so again from this point and just looking at from the fundamental and the technicals cineworld doesn't look good and its competitors in terms of disney plus netflix and amc they just look a lot better. And if I was going to pick one of those three, I would definitely pick Disney because they have the parks and they have the merchandise that goes along with Disney as well. But just for the purpose of this video, Cineworld is looking pretty poor. And I think that essentially 120, which is a 120, is, is, your, is your ceiling in here. A break above 120 would be good, but even pre-pandemic, we only saw £2 a share. So, you know, it just, to me, just doesn't really appeal uh, it is the 23rd of august my name is tyrone thanks for watching if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and there'll be updates daily on the website thank you